What would make someone so mad that they would freak out like this? Let me just play a little bit of it and then we'll go through all of it and then watch the entire thing. Okay, before we get started, I just came across this video that um, made this video even more important to put out. So, there is a group called Gain Peace that is going around and trying to convert people to Islam all over the United States. They go to convention centers and neighborhood places and they just lie to him lie to them about um, certain things and but this Shabil Ahmed has truly crossed the line and that's why I am doing this he is comparing Jesus to Muhammad and added Jesus to the Shahada Jesus was never in the Shahada. This is blasphemous. And I do have the right to stand up to his lies. So nobody can say that this is phobia of any sort. He's lying to these young boys to get them to convert. And it's quite disgusting. And I'm sure some uh, Muslims will be upset that they added Jesus too. But... It, it, it's it's absolutely blasphemous because their view of Jesus is just as a prophet and equivalent to Muhammad, the one that married a nine-year-old girl that slaughtered, stoned, killed many people, owned slaves. It's blasphemous. So let's listen to him add Jesus to the Shahada. If you don't know what a Shahada is, that's when you convert to Islam, you just have to recite this, um, these words, which is essentially that you believe Allah is the one and only true God and that Muhammad was his prophet. That's it. But let's go ahead and listen. To you before, yeah. approximately 20,000 of our fellow Americans each year, of their own choice, by the way, no force to them. Islam yeah. is not spread by force. I'm not going to show you all the whole thing, but I just wanted to stop right here. He does this in almost every video. Says, you're not being forced, right? Like, why would that even need to be said if that doesn't truly happen? Of course it happens. And many of us know that. Maybe not force by the sword like it used to be, but force, coercion, and lies. So, hard pronounce it. <laughs> so, so what we will do is, first we'll, uh, I will recite this in English, so you repeat okay. after me, okay. and then we'll s do the same thing in Arabic for the sake of formality. Okay. I will mention it, and I want you to repeat after me. Okay. Okay, inshallah. I bear witness. I bear witness. That there is no other God. That there is no other God. Besides one God, Allah. Besides one God, Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That Muhammad. That Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. Is the messenger of Allah. Is the messenger of Allah. And I also bear witness. And I also bear witness. That Jesus. That Jesus. Peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. Is also a messenger of Allah. Is also a messenger of Allah. Wonderful. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> well, since YouTube seems to be Sharia compliant and they don't really like people talking bad about not wanting prisoners radicalized or helping to free the Iranian women of their hijabs and, and whatnot, because all of those videos were demonetized, I figured I should do some more because people need to know this information. Could you imagine being told all your life about something, something so 
integral to every aspect of your life and then realizing that it's absolutely BS and a lot of people don't know about this who what am I talking about I'm talking about Islam I'm not talking about the Muslim people because those are two separate situations that's the only reason I am even addressing this if I knew that they all knew about this then I'd be like well that sucks <laughs> Uh, they know about this and they still follow these people like Muhammad and stuff um, well then that would be a different situation another thing that I'm seeing that is just dishonest is a man called Shabir Ahmed he's going around to big cities in the US from Chicago to Houston they're putting up these billboards with this group called Gain Peace and he's inviting Christians and whoever else in the neighborhood to come to the mosque or come to a convention center and he goes through questions and answers them and tells them all of the great things about Islam and some people have actually converted many people actually mainly a lot of them happen to be Catholics which I'll probably do on a different video about why I feel that is but that's who they're targeting. They are targeting young women. Um, Hispanic women is what I'm seeing a lot of. And so this is something you need to be looking out for. Hey, if you know all the information and you still want to be convert, go for it. I'm just concerned about the truth. And I watched a few of Shabil's videos and they're just blatant lies maybe he doesn't know anybody that knows about Dawa understands that this is exactly what they're taught from Zakir Knight to uh, Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa all of these people push the same nonsense uh, and La um, what's her name Sarsour Linda Sarsour what a hot mess I don't even think she knows I think she's just blatantly just out of touch with reality but they go around and tell people that Islam was the first religion to free the slaves they were just so amazing and did all this stuff for women and just go on and on all lies and they do this on purpose so the the main ones I mean it's just silly to even think that Islam is a feminist <laughs> I mean that's just Muhammad was married to a six-year-old little girl as well as ten other women which at that time may have you know the, the age difference there's no excuse for the multiple wives eh, maybe so but the slave thing are you kidding me they still in Arabia they still have slavery to this day I mean it's not as bad but in Islamic countries it's essentially they stopped in like 1967 or something and yet they tell people that they freed the slaves and like it was this commune everybody's hanging out they don't tell people that you know you e you were either threatened with your life to convert or you had to pay 50% of your income to stay in the country that they overthrew okay that's what they did in multiple countries and that's why it spread so fast and then it become radicalized when we got all these this Islamic State thing going on and everything but the main people I'm worried about are these women because you can be beaten legally in Islam in, in the Muslim religion you can and you know for this man going around and telling people all of these things about how Allah said in the Quran it states that they, they all say this always 
always, always, always use this line. They say, whenever somebody asks them, well, isn't it kind of violent? Aren't y'all taught to be violent? And they always bring up this Quran verse. It says that, they say, Allah said that if you take one life or one soul, it's like taking the souls of all humanity. Well, that seems nice. That seems like something that our Bible would say, right? Well, they, they don't tell you what verses were before that and after that, which are these. Outcome of that. But what does Islam say about violence and terrorism? The Quran says in chapter 5, verse number 32, taking one innocent life is like taking the life of all of humanity and saving one life is like saving the life of all of humanity even muhammad peace be upon him he said that even in a war do not kill women and children means no non-combatant should be touched harmed or killed by the muslim fighting soldiers so in islam there is no such thing as hiroshima nagasaki in islam there is no such thing as carpet bombing but you may be asking the questions, how come some people are doing that? Because they're not following the clear-cut guidance from the Quran and the Prophet's example. So the verse was speaking to Cain, uh, about Cain and Abel. We decried the children of Israel that if anyone slew a person, unless it be for murder or for spreading mischief in the land, it would be as if he slew the whole people. And technically, it says bloods, not just blood, because what it was speaking of is their whole lineage. So if you kill one person, then it's like you're killing off all of their descendants. And so that's why the rabbis wrote it in the Talmud. And then this is what it says right before. The punishment for those who wage war against God and his apostate apostle and strive with might and main for mischief throughout the land is execution or crucifixion or cutting off the hand and feet from opposite sides or exile from the land that is their at their disgrace is their world and a heavy punishment is theirs hereafter but they just tell you that little snippet and they use this all the time even Obama used this in one of his speeches. It's ridiculous. It's just something that the rabbis had written down in the Talmud. It had nothing to do with Allah at all. This was just... Muhammad was... They actually called him the ear. And what that means is... You ever had one of those friends that anything you say around them they're gonna listen to it and they're gonna go tell everybody and so they would do that to him and they would tell him anything and he would believe any of it he couldn't read and write so he had to have other people write the stuff down for him but that's so that's why some of especially the early part of the Quran looks kind of similar to the Bible because it was taken from Jewish sources I mean that's just what happened. Uh, it's not funny, um, but I'm trying to make light of it. And another thing, I have I had many comments that people were asking questions or they believe that the Quran has been well preserved and absolutely to the letter has been preserved throughout all of these years. And essentially most Muslims believe this they believe that the book that was written while Muhammad was alive or right after or whatever is the same book that they have now it's absolutely false this is like the 31st edition and it didn't come out until 1920 something. They tested it in Egypt and then went ahead and made it an international edition. And I'm not talking about just different versions like how we, well, like the Christians have, we have the King 
uh, King James version. It's another King James. Uh, we have the NIV, the today's English version, um, and I have a Catholic one somewhere around here. These are just different in certain aspects, and we know that. We know that there are different versions, and we can go back to the codex, the codex of the Greek and Hebrew manuscripts. Muslims aren't aware that they, every time that they would print a new edition of the Quran, they would order for all the old Qurans to be burned. And that way there was no evidence of what was changed in them. But of course, especially back then when there was no internet or whatever, you can't just like order everybody to burn it and actually them adhere to it. So there have been, all of them have been found, uh, all the copies, and I'm going to show you all those because there's at least 30, 31, and I'm sorry, but it's true. And I'm talking about Eric, Arabic. Qurans because I know they're going to say no well yeah we know there's French editions and English no these are Arabic Qurans separate and I mean that right there is pretty shady I mean your moms know this the scholars know this all this information you can find it online it's just most people don't look into it um, I, I had a lot of mean comments but I understand you know people get upset when they find out that they've been lied to for their entire lives about something so huge so um, I'm gonna show you a video of a man whenever he found out on live TV about all of these things and you know I really do feel bad for them but that's why I'm doing this I'm doing it out of love I'm not doing it to make fun of you or whatever. If I didn't care, I wouldn't even tell you. I'd say, hmm, that sucks. Maybe someone will tell them one day. But um, I'm telling you because if you truly want the truth, then here it is. You know, this is the truth. And for anybody else you know share this video a lot of people don't know these things they just don't because they're t lied to and people get all like oh my gosh they're radicalized how th that's crazy I thought Islam was a religion of peace yeah I mean it's it says it in the Quran what to do to Christians and Jews. It says we are the worst of creatures. Ah. <laughs> but we're not and we're welcoming. So don't feel like you're alone. Don't go jump off a cliff like your prophet tried to do on multiple, multiple occasions. Honestly, I feel that Muhammad was likely suffering from schizophrenia or something like that because of the many times he tried to commit suicide. Another thing, it just upsets me when they try to compare him to Jesus. I mean, they're not on the same level. It's blasphemous. And anyway, let's take a look at that video of whenever that man found out on live TV and we will look at the Qurans, all the multiple Qurans. Okay, so these are some of the 31 Qurans that they have found. These are Arabic Qurans that most Muslims do not know about. They don't know about them. So we're going to watch what happens when DCCI Ministries, who um, have ex-Muslims that, and they're now Christians, are in the group. DCCI Ministries, you can go to their YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the pinned comments. And we'll watch how freaked out they get when they find that this out. Because they don't even believe it. They're, and they get all angry about it. But, which is a natural response. But 
most of them just have no idea about it. That's why we need to spread this kind of information. Hold these up, and what do we now know about these Qurans? Abjad says there's nothing. Now, Abjad, do all of these Qurans agree with each other? No. Are there two Qurans that agree with each other? No. Is there even one Quran that agrees with the Quran we have here today? No. This is the Quran we use today. It's the same Quran. This is not the same Quran as these ones we have here today. Surah Tel Ayasad says, Yaksibuna. What's that mean? Yaksibuna. They're nice. It means they lie. Okay? And over on this side, it says, Yukazibuna. What does Yukazibuna? They cause lies. They cause, they accuse others of lies. 140. Here you have Dr. Kuna. Dr. Luna versus Yakaluna. So Dr. Luna versus Yakaluna. They say, you say, and they say. Okay, you say or they say. And the verse says, or do you say, Ibrahim, Ibrahim, Yakub, and Azaf, they were Jews. And over here in the watch it says, or do they say that Ibrahim, Yakub were Jews? Get him! Get him! I'm not going to go there. Exactly. Down here, this guy always You want to be in the camera. You're short enough. Hold on. Hold on. Ask them to come down on my level. Which one is it? 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 Now, is that different? Are these different words? Do these have different meanings? Excuse me, sir. Watch your side, please. Why are the Muslims always violent like this? Come on, Muslims, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. If you're going to be violent, just go. We'll call the police. We'll ask you to go. Just been watching what's been happening. We showed these 26 Qurans, you'll see the video. We were about ready to leave the corner when all these young Muslims came and surrounded us. They wanted these Qurans, they wanted to take them. They were trying, as you saw, trying to take them out of our bags. They were so very upset because they want to know why we had these Qurans. We told them because we've been showing that they're all different. And they could not believe that, and they didn't want this evidence to leave the corner. I'm the public. You don't touch it because yeah. this is property. He's not allowed to the Quran Kareem and the liar They want to steal from you. Come on, 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 Every one of them is different. Every one of them is different. We have shown today 26 different Qurans, and you're upset, and you want to take these Qurans from us. I don't want to take it. Have I said that? Has a look at it? Goodbye. We've finished this. Hey, 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 hey! Don't touch it. Here we go. This is so difficult. You saw how we had to walk away. You saw how we had to protect the bag. You saw how they tried to even grab it out of the bag. Can you see why this destroys everything Islam stands for? Can you see why Muslims are in so insecure? I thank God we don't have this problem with the Bible. It's going to be something that will continue. But then you'll understand for Muslims who have always been told their whole lives that the Quran is sacrosanct, it's eternal, it's been sent down, it has been unchanged, and every Quran is exactly the same all over the world. We showed that there were 26 different Qurans. They're in those bags. They wanted to get rid of them. They wanted to make sure that we did not continue with this 
because they don't know how to deal with it because it destroys everything they know. They don't have a relationship with God. All they have is that Quran and the man, the book of the man, the book of the man. That's all they have to go on. I can see why they're angry. I can see why they wanted to get rid of this from us. I can see why they were concerned that we were still going to use this because as long as we have this in our possession, we can now show the whole world the problem with this book, this Quran. God bless you. Some people might want to know why I'm showing such a thing. Because they need to know the truth. It's the right thing to do, not hide it from them. And I turned the voice down on this because it, it, he, he's pretty upset. So you can just read the bottom of it. And this really is, it hurts my heart actually to see this. I mean, could you imagine being lied to like this? And we're seeing it going on right now in our country, across the West, in the UK, Australia, these people are being lied to. Now, granted, the majority of Christian people that convert to Islam, like 90% leave within three years. But the women and the young people that get caught up with this at an early age, those are the ones that we need to worry about. So this is not to hurt anyone. This is horrific to live almost your entire life and then find this out. But, of course, you know, the people that you're going to get mad at if you are Muslim is going to be the people telling you the truth, like myself. When you need to be getting mad at your imams and your scholars that keep this from you purposely. Because they know we have access to this. They definitely have access to it. They actually block most of these videos in countries like Pakistan and other countries. And you see how she's like, this is why we don't let these books in our country. She still wants it censored. So they know. I like what he's saying right here. Read the Quran. Read it. I mean, this occurs every day with so many people, but the sad thing is, many of these people can't be public about this. Many of these people are threatened with death. Some of them are just killed when they come out and say that they no longer believe in Islam. And that's what worries me, especially when we have groups that are going to big cities and having these meetings trying to say that Jesus is equivalent to Muhammad this Shabil Ahmed. It's blasphemous and it should not be allowed. I'm not asking for him to be censored, but I do believe this is just as blasphemous as if we were to lie about Islam. What I'm doing is not lying. These come from their very own sources. See, they put these things out themselves. These, um, propaganda pieces which have no basis in reality that's why you don't see a Quran verse on it that's why you don't see Hadith on it because it's a lie these are not true these did not this didn't happen these aren't in the Quran however the verses that every single woman needs to know 
especially if you consider yourself a feminist or that you care about women, you need to know this. Men have authority over women because God has made it the superior one. Allah permits you to shut them in a separate room and beat them, but not severely. If they abstain, they have the right to food and clothing. Treat women well, for they are like domestic animals, and they possess nothing themselves. Allah has made the enjoyment of their bodies lawful in his Quran. Tabir uh, 113. We have people like Linda Sarsour trying to say that, oh, everything's equality. We choose to wear the hijab. It's, it's all equality. When you see this in the Quran, and get two witnesses out of, your, out of your own men. And if there are not two men available, then a man and two women, such as for agree. So what this is saying is a woman is only worth half of a man. So if you need a witness, you have to have two women if there's no men. And that's why so many women are raped and nothing is ever done with it because they have to have four witnesses for a rape. A lot of times women are sentenced for saying that they've been raped, for going to the police. They get locked up. It's horrific. And, you know, some people might think, oh, this is not happening in our country. Who gives a crap? Really? Ask the people in the UK. Ask the people in Germany. It's happening. People just aren't paying any attention. And then in the Quran, it says, your women are your tilth. You may do with her as you please or come at her however you please. What that means, and it's in these other verses that I'm going to show, what that means is you can have sexual intercourse with her however and whenever, no matter what she says. It goes into more detail. See, this is from the Quran. See, what people don't understand is they have Qurans and they have Hadiths. So they can kind of get away with stuff by just saying, oh, this isn't in the Quran. But what they go by is, a, is the Quran and the Hadiths. The hadiths tell them everything from what foot to get into the shower first and to how to cl clip your pubic hairs. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. And actually, that's what I've seen with a lot of con converts. They say, oh, it gives me structure. So they're converting to get structure in their lives. It, it, it's so shallow. But they could end up in a world of issues. So for the rest of this, you can stop, pause them, and read them yourself or download them. People need to have knowledge of this. Because this is going on all around. And they're just blatantly lying to people about this. It goes on to say the craziest things, and these are just some of the verses, but there's one situation where a man cannot come into your home if, as a woman unless you breastfeed him five to ten times, which in Muhammad's crazy mind said that that would make them related. So if you are a husband and you have a male friend your wife is supposed to stick her breast in your mouth five or ten times. And that is supposed to make you like an adopted child. And so then there would be no sexual tension. I mean, it, it's so bizarre that there really are like <laughs> no words. No woman can fulfill her duty towards Allah until she fulfills her duty to her husband. Really? Really? And of course, you know, his nine-year-old wife that he had, Aisha, which is really sad. And, you know, they have these, they beat them and stone them. 
And this is another piece of propaganda, something that Linda Sarsour shared, I think. Um, it's so ridiculous. Never hit a woman. Yep, he did. He even he stoned a woman, killed her, killed many women, had many sex slaves, had many slaves in general. Black slaves. That's another thing. I have no idea how any black people believe that this is the religion for them. They say, oh, Christianity's for the white men. Really? What do you mean? <laughs> he, this was the whitest prophet ever. And he owned black slaves. And they still own slaves today. In these countries. It, it boggles my mind. And the thing is, nobody has the balls enough to say anything. There's just a handful of us that will talk about this. First of all, because we get censored. Second of all, because they threaten to kill us. But we can't allow them to threaten and threaten and threaten. And then we just run away and just allow this to take over our countries. I mean, this is insane. Muhammad was a false prophet. There's no doubt, 100%. He absolutely was. And to use him, now they're using him, comparing him to Jesus, but yet putting, adding him into the Shahada, this is blasphemy on a, a whole new level. And this just... People need to know about these things because people are, especially in the West, are ignorant about this, especially the left. They're like, oh, everybody should be able to practice whatever. Yeah, but not everybody knows the truth. It's fine for them to go after the Bible and go after Christians all they want. But we can. Is Allah the Antichrist? I don't know. Um, but you can go through this. To see that, it, I mean, he's definitely a false prophet. And the thing is, for people that are going to be, oh, don't, don't do this, you know, everybody should do what they want. Yep, they can do what they want. As soon as they know the truth. The truth is being hidden from them for over a thousand years. It's horrific. And it... it Boggled my mind when I spoke to a Christian group the other day about, you know, helping with prison radicalization. And they said, oh, you know, we really couldn't do that because the Muslim community center around here helps us. So we don't want to hurt their feelings. Hurt their feelings by telling them the truth? Really? Is that what we're going to do as Christians now? Run from the truth because somebody's being nice to you? I think the nice thing to do is to tell them the truth and help them with their salvation. Let's listen to 50 reasons that Muhammad is definitely a false prophet by Dr. David Wood. Muhammad's first impression of his revelations was that they were demonic in nature. Muhammad tried repeatedly to kill himself. Muhammad allowed his followers to rape their female captives. The Quran allows Muslims to beat their rebellious wives into submission. Muhammad says the Bible talks about him when, according to the Bible, he's a false prophet. Muhammad married the divorced wife of his own adopted son. Muhammad was disgraced by God in death. The one way he said he would die if he's a false prophet, that is exactly how Muhammad died. Muhammad had sex with a nine-year-old girl. Muhammad delivered revelations from the devil and came back and blamed the devil for this revelation. Muhammad affirmed the teachings of the Torah and the Gospel when his teachings completely contradict the teachings of the Torah and the Gospel. Muhammad tortured a man named Kanana for money. He killed people who criticized his religion. He, uh, he tried to divorce his wife Sauda when she became unattractive and he had to cut a deal that's affirmed by Allah in order, to, in order for her to, to be able to eat. Uh, Muhammad's uh, revelation 
to his dinner guests was so obviously from Muhammad and not from Allah. Uh, we, we wonder how anyone can take the Quran seriously after reading it. Uh, Muhammad was a victim of black magic, according to him, not according to us. Uh, Muhammad delivered clearly false prophecies. He encouraged his followers to practice mutta. Mutta, this is prostitution. Uh, he had nine wives when the Quran allows Muslims to have four. He broke his vow to his wife about having sex with his slave girl, and the Quran is completely theologically incoherent. You cannot make sense of it when Allah gives all of this revelation, and then Allah is the one who corrupts it by tricking and deceiving people into believing that Jesus died on the cross. The Quran teaches us stars are missiles that God uses to shoot demons when they try to sneak into heaven. Muhammad ordered his followers to kill apostates, even, who, even those who left for very good reason. According to uh, the Quran, Allah is the greatest of deceiver, deceivers when, according to the Bible, Satan is the father of lies. Muhammad had no assurance of his salvation despite the fact that he is the greatest of Muslims. According to Muhammad, women are stupid and immoral. Islam promotes idolatry. Muhammad said there would be no discrepancy in the Quran if it's the word of God when there's all kinds of discrepancy. The Quran is based on the argument from literary excellence, the silliest argument ever offered for anything. Muhammad uh, told his followers about a paradise that would make Hugh Hefner blush with the amount of sexual perversion in it. Uh, and, of course, if Christianity is true, Islam cannot be the truth because they teach different things. Islam teaches that the sun sets in a pool of murky water. The Quran has been corrupted when Allah uh, promised to protect it. Um, the concept of abrogation makes no sense. Allah is turning things right around, changing revelations from one week to the next when this is supposed to be his eternal word. Muhammad supported his fledgling religion by robbing people. Islam took rituals from the pagans. It stole stories uh, from the groups around Muhammad during the time. Muhammad told his followers to breastfeed an adult in order to uh, do away with sexual desire between them. Muhammad wore women's clothing. Islam deifies Muhammad by encouraging Muslims to talk to him directly during prayers. And Islam completely reverses the gospel by having the guilty Judas die on behalf of the innocent Jesus instead of the innocent Jesus dying on behalf of sinners. False revelation from Gabriel, an obviously false revelation. The Quran confuses Mary, the mother of Jesus, with Miriam, the sister of Aaron and Moses. Hygiene practices that would kill you if you took them seriously. Muhammad takes historical figures like Alexander the Great, turns them into Muslims when we know they weren't Muslims. Allah has no, no love for unbelievers, which means he is uh, deficient in love. Allah punishes Jews and Christians for the sins of Muslims, clearly unjust, even according to what Muslims tell me. Uh, Muhammad encourages followers to violently subjugate the rest of the world, clearly inconsistent with the revelation of uh, Jesus, which Muhammad affirms. Allah wants people to sin, showing where Allah is, does it, showing that Allah is dependent on human beings to show his forgiveness. Islam makes Satan the true hero of everything and finally portrays Jesus as a miserable failure. Islam exalts Satan, insults God, and makes Jesus look like a failure. That's what Islam does at the end of the day. And you're telling me this guy is a prophet. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. And I will put the links in the pinned comments if you'd like to help support my channel because, of course, this video will not be monetized. And I likely will take it down, but my BitChute account is also in the pinned comments.